vita. Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Hinson Compton, and today I am with Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, and we're going to be talking about a new initiative at the Ministry of Health called the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. And a little after that, we'll be talking, I guess, a little bit about something I clearly know a lot about, which is breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, so. Ms. Hunt, what exactly is the, the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative? Okay, so the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is a joint initiative by World Health Organization and UNICEF, and it began in 1991. And the whole goal of this initiative is to promote breastfeeding. So this initiative w came about where they're trying to support facilities. So facilities like hospitals where babies are born, like in St. Lucia, our babies are born in hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now you find in other countries, they may have facilities solely for, um, for, um, for, for, child for birth. birth. Yeah, childbirth. So these facilities, um, they become what you call baby friendly because um, the whole goal is to promote breastfeeding. So that is why this initiative came together in 1991. And you find many countries have adopted it even some a few Caribbean countries. So we're not there yet, but it, this is what we are aspiring to become. So is it something you've, you're about to initiate or is it, it's, you're not there yet? We're not there yet. We tried it some a few years ago. It entails a lot, but we are, we are in the process of, of um, starting the, pro we are starting the process. Um, so this year we, with PAHO, who is going to be assisting us, we are, will be starting the process of training because everybody at the hospital needs to be needs to be need to be trained so that they understand what baby friendly hospital initiative means so, so for some persons it's a new terminology so we need to sensitize persons so they know what it is about so when you say is it clearly focused on breastfeeding or are there other aspects to the um, initiative yes so the whole goal is to support breastfeeding but there are other factors that mm. that is important and um, for example um, not encouraging b babies to be bottle fed. Right. So and so, I will go through the ten steps for you to be for you to be um, baby friendly. A hospital that is baby friendly. There are ten steps that I will go through in a while mm -hmm. that the hospital is supposed to be adhered to, and and this entails it's a it's a ten step process that they need to go through for them to for us to be designated. So it's not an easy process. And that's why it's important that persons get trained. I'll give you a little example. If we have the status, we are designated as baby friendly, we cannot even accept um, tokens from companies that are selling um, formula. Mm. So it is that strict. So you, you can't, when you say tokens, you mean like sort of a, 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 little, a, a little pen that might be, that might say certain company's name that is selling, I don't mm. want to mention any names, that are selling baby formula, mm -hmm. you cannot have, doctors cannot have that. Okay. Where parents, because it's, it's a way of, um, mm. you know, advertising. So, okay, that you bring me to my next question. So the, the reliance on breastfeeding, is that what exclusive, the term exclusive breastfeeding yes. is called? So the whole goal is to encourage exclusive breastfeeding. Now, exclusive breastfeeding means that you are giving your baby only breast milk for the first six months of life. Nothing else, no water, nothing. Now we know there are certain circumstances where it, you know, medical issues where a baby may need something else. But apart from that, nothing else baby needs except breast milk for the first six months. And they are supposed to be um, given other foods beyond six months, mm -hmm. but you continue to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. You continue to breastfeed after the six months, introducing, you know, other foods to the baby so you can breastfeed your child up to two years or beyond two years. But what, what kind of other foods are we talking about in addition to the breast milk? Fruits, vegetables, but you give them in mm. very small amounts. So like a little 
teaspoon. Mm -hmm. So when we say you are, you are um, adding foods, you are introducing foods to the baby, you add very, you know, a little cereal, a little mm -hmm. fruit, a little, you know, puree, of course, because right. they are having breast milk. So it's a little transition into solid foods, but it's a process. But it's why, um, why specifically breast milk is, um, well, exclusively, I should say, mm -hmm. is there, are there some benefits during oh, yes. that part of a child's life? Well, oh, yes. There are so many benefits to, um, to breastfeeding that we, we, we will need a, another session to have benefits, which we will. But, um, mm. for example, babies who are exclusively breastfed tend to have less infections, tend to be less sick. Mm. They are healthier intellectually. There are so many benefits to a baby, in, even the mother, even cancer, less rates of cancers, and um, there's a benefit to the country. So... Babies who are not breastfed tend to, um, you have a higher mortality rate, like death of babies be before five years, mm. and so, or malnutrition. So we want to avoid these things, and so this is why this initiative has come about, is to really support mothers and to help build them to have the skills to, to breastfeed exclusively and beyond. And so I, I also understand that it is a means to help the mother um, feel closer to the child in, oh, in yes, a sense. Oh yes, the bond. Um, the bond that a baby mm. has with their parent. Um, a lot of research has come about saying that, you know, even to do with um, delinquent behavior, that, and you, you can understand that a child who does not feel that bond, that love with their mother when they're very young, that they grow up and then they feel like they're not loved and so they may go, um, you know, they may actually have a, a life of crime where they go to these persons who might sh pretend to show them love, let's say for some people who, in drugs. And this man is, you know, showing you love, the love that you didn't get from your parent, your mother, while you were, you know, a baby. So that bond, there's a lot of research that is coming about how it can be beneficial to the child, oh. psychology and, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so there's definitely a psychological component definitely, to, to definitely. breastfeeding. So yeah. uh, let me know, what, by what means are hospitals in St. Lucia um, going to be motivated to utilize this initiative? Well, we are hoping to get at least two of our hospitals to become baby-friendly. And the process is we have to first um, get an assessment done to see what is it that we need to do. So for one of the hospitals, we have that assessment is ongoing where we've we've done the assessment um we've not done the assessment sorry we we did the there's a form you're looking at sort of the, some of the aspects that you need to fill out etc for example it's it's kind of a long process i can't go through all of it but after that we will start the training and sensitizing the country as to what is baby friendly hospital initiative because I'm sure for many persons who are listening right now it might be the first time that they hear it so we want people to understand what it means it's basically that we want our hospital to to represent that the first food that we want to give our child our children our babies is breast milk now in St. Lucia in the Caribbean you find that initiation to breast feed is actually high and what I mean by that is when the baby is born you may find a lot of mothers actually giving their babies breast milk. Sometimes after two weeks, they stop. So the initiation is high, but it's the continuation of that breast feeding is where the problem lies. And there may, be, there may be a number of reasons why they may not continue to breastfeed. It could be that persons have to go back to work or whatever other personal reasons that they may have. But we want that, not only the initiation, but we want the continued exclusive, especially the exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, we want the children to get that. Okay, we're actually due for our first break. I'm mm -hmm. learning a lot from you right now. Yeah. Uh, something I didn't know anything about. So please stay with us. And uh, you're watching Issues and Answers. We'll be back right after this break. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. You 
becomes organic and joins. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. We're here with Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Ms. Lisa Hunt, and we're talking about the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, so while we were off camera, you were talking about the different means uh, which hospitals can actually fail mm -hmm. in the initiative. Why don't you uh, talk a little bit about that? Yes, so um, <coughs> after we have done everything that we need to do to become baby friendly, you know, a baby friendly hospital, you'd have some external assessors who would come in, not from St. Lucia, from other countries, who come in to see whether we can be designated as baby friendly. And so you may have everything in place where you've trained everybody, you have um, you know, spoken to the mothers and everything that needs to get done, and which I'll go through the process in a while. But if they see a bottle or a tit, a baby's tit in sight, then we would fail. So that's how strict they are. So mm. everything should be locked in a cupboard where the parents, because they're saying if they can't see, that means the parent can see it, and you are saying it's okay to bottle feed your child. Okay, well, why don't you talk about the, the processes that you just spoke of earlier. Okay, so to become a baby-friendly hospital, we, we have to follow 10 steps, what you call the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. So I'm gonna go for the 10 steps. Mm -hmm. The first step is that hospital must support mothers to breast breastfeed and they should not prioritize infant formula bottles or teeth. So we have to make breastfeeding standard practice. So that's the first step. The second step, and some of those things we are already doing. So some of them we may not be, but um, some of them we are already doing. So number two, we, has to we have to ensure that the staff have sufficient knowledge, competence and skills to support breastfeeding. So mothers are supposed to be trained, mothers are supposed to know how to um, breastfeed, they're supposed to feel supported by the nurses and to understand the importance of breastfeeding. Step number three, discuss the importance and management of breastfeeding with pregnant women and their families. Step number four, facilitate immediate and uninterrupted skin-to-skin -skin contact and support mothers to initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible after birth. Now, this is, con this is an issue that we have where a lot of parents are having the babies um, by C-section and sometimes they are not able to have that skin-to-skin -skin, um, bond with the, the baby. And so that may interrupt. Sometimes the, the mother might be out and some may have to give the child's feed, etc. Number, step number five, support mothers to initiate and maintain breastfeeding and manage common difficulties. Number six, do not provide breastfeeding newborns any other fluids or other breast, sorry, do not provide breastfed newborns any foods or fluids other than breast milk unless medically indicated. And that's the exclusive breastfeeding that we were talking about. Number seven, enable mothers and their infants to remain together and to practice rooming in for 24 hours a day. So the baby has to be next to the mother for 24 hours after giving birth. Support mothers to recognize and respond to their infant cues to feed. So the mother's supposed to understand that, you know, there are certain cues, certain things that you look for when a child is hungry. So that's what this is about. Number nine, counsel mothers on the use and risk of feeding bottles, tits, and pacifiers. So there are instances where um, a child has to be fed um, for medical reasons. So, so the mother still has to understand, you know, how to care for these things and how to clean them, etc. And the risk of, of using pacifiers, etc. Coordinate number ten, last one. Coordinate discharge so that the parents and their infants have timely access to ongoing support and care. Now, most persons, when they leave the hospital, at the hospital, they feel confident because the nurses are there. But when they go to their homes, they may not have support to continue breastfeeding. So on, on discharge, we need to provide the care and the support and, and even the family members to encourage them to see how they can support this mother, especially if she has to go to work. How can she continue breastfeeding when she has to go to work? You know, she has to pump her breast, freeze it, etc. 
and these kind of things. So, so, yeah, what so that's the um, 10 steps. Once we can practice these 10 steps, we can become, you know, this is what we have to follow to be designated as baby friendly. Now, as you mentioned that a lot of mothers prematurely stop breastfeeding, other than possible work obligations, mm -hmm. uh, what other reasons would there be for women who to prematurely halt their breastfeeding? There, there are many reasons. Um, you find that sometimes uh, they feel that the babies are not full, especially the grandmothers. The grandmothers are very, I blame them for that. They would say to the, um, you know, the, the daughters that the baby is hungry. Now, sometimes the baby may be breastfeeding and still crying. And, you know, sometimes when you hear baby cry, you, you expect that, okay, the baby is hungry. So sometimes you're breastfeeding that child, the child is still crying. The child might be crying for another reason. They might be uncomfortable. Mm. They might be an aunt biting the child. There might be so many other reasons that the child might be crying and not because the child is hungry. So they see it as, okay, this child is crying, that this child is hungry, and I have fed that child, and the child keeps on crying. So they will say, okay, it's not, it's not, um, the, ch the child is not full. But a, a, the stomach of a baby is very, very small. It's very tiny. And it does not take much to fill that baby up. So um, we want persons to discourage, you know, those who are encouraging their, their family members to bottle feed because they want to see this protruded stomach to make them feel that the baby is full, but what you are doing is stretching this child's stomach unnecessarily. There are other reasons like... Um, some mothers, especially the younger ones, feel like, oh, their breast is going to fall. Yeah. Um, well, gravity will take your breast, other things. But if you wear in a supportive bra, breastfeeding doesn't cause your breast to fall. Mm -hmm. Because some persons don't have, well, I don't want to go there, but there are supportive bras that will prevent that from happening. So apart from the myths and, um, you know, going to work, some parents, um, you know, and, and this is where, you know, the mothers need support. Breastfeeding is not an easy process. It, it can be very difficult. And, you know, after having a baby, you know, you may be tired. And so, you know, sometimes even feeding the child might, might seem a lot, especially if you've had a C-section and you're in pain. So reasons like that, mothers may say, okay, I, I really cannot, you know, breastfeed that child. But there are other things you can do. You can pump your breast milk and have someone else to feed that child for you while you are taking a nice needed rest can actually you bring me to an interesting question can if let's say um a mother can can other babies have breast milk that is not from mm -hmm. not from their biological mother? that's a very good question yes they can and they have something in other countries called a a breast bank so a child can be breastfed from any mother once that you know, it is safe in terms of a no, other, no health condition. Of course, they would test it, etc. It can be done. If you have a sister that has had a baby, that, that can happen. However, in our society, our people, I'm not sure if they will go for that, but it is safe. It can be done. Okay. Yes. We're actually due for our second and final break. Uh, stay with us. And then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit, of, a bit more about the program specifically because there are other components mm -hmm. of the program that I want to talk about. Yeah. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Kite moun don bagay chance. Depi moun fet, pièce moun pa jamais counsel. Moni Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband and we spent over an hour on the cell. Sa se counseling? Just think about the glass. When you're having difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. When your situation is bien way, ek mwen besoin professional counseling. Me mani l'argent. Iche a condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call the EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit ASAP. Because I want professional. Did you say free? Free counseling. But Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling? Call the EAP unit at 468 2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. 
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jacques Kingston Compton. We're speaking with Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. And we're talking about a new initiative at the Ministry of Health uh, and in local hospitals called the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. Uh, so, yes, could you tell us about some of the, the, con the other countries mm -hmm. other than the St. Lucia who have implemented the initiative? Well, we have not implemented it yet. Well, that you're <laughs> we are about, to, starting, that you are about yes. to implement. Yes, so as we speak, I know of Antigua, oh. who is in the process of implementation. Um, Guyana, Guyana has many hospitals. So in, in some of the hospitals in Guyana has, has, um, has been designated as baby-friendly hospitals. Barbados, and um, I know Trinidad had it once. Now, some countries have had it, and they've lost it. So becoming designated doesn't mean like an end to it all. Like, okay, we are very friendly, and then we're okay. They will be, we will be monitored, you know, periodically to see if we are keeping up with what we're supposed to do. And so you can lose your status. And you'll be monitored by the same um, the assessors, external... External, yes, assessors. Mm. And, you know, I mentioned before that just to give a little understanding as how strict this is, if we are a baby-friendly hospital, we cannot, we cannot accept donations from any company that is selling um, formula, like formula. Mm -hmm. especially when they, the name is on there, the, the brand, because it's like we are advertising the brand. And, you know... There's something called the international, the international code, which I will have to come on to talk about it because it's, it's very comprehensive. So we have signed on to this code and we have to abide by it. So there are certain things that, you know, advertising on, on television, you know, formula is not acceptable. And so if we are supposed to be abiding by this code, this, not, this should not happen. So, so what, what sort of means will you be using to say, educate the mothers on the benefits of breastfeeding? Yes, so um, counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling, giving them talks, and even, even after they've had the baby, you know, nurses will be coming around and ensuring that they understand how to breastfeed. Even, for example, even having the baby to latch on properly. You may have all the knowledge mm -hmm. that you have, talking from experience, you may have the knowledge. and. When you've now given birth, you need the support from a nurse to help you to hold the baby properly, to ensure that the baby is latched on properly to your breast. Because if they're not latched on properly, they may not get um, the milk. There's a, there's a technique in, in ensuring that the baby's mouth is latched onto the breast for them to be breastfed. If, it's, if they're not, then the mother may actually feel pain while breastfeeding. And that support so, is given in the hospital itself? Yes, right now you're getting this... Um, so they're getting this support right now. That's why I said the 10 steps, there are some things that we are doing already, but we have to continue to do more okay. and to ensure that we are doing, following the, the, all the 10 steps. So generally, you mentioned that they, they get support while they're in the hospital. What, generally, how long are um, mothers in the hospital post-giving post childbirth? Post-delivery. Um, a baby, a mother who has, who, on her first, her first baby, can stay, I think, a couple of days. I mean, I may, I may be wrong. But if you have health conditions, like you've had a C-section, you may have to stay a week or more, depending on how serious you, you know it is. Uh, do you have any idea in, in the, the countries, the other countries that have implemented, has that increased the rate of, of mothers breastfeeding to the term that they're supposed to breastfeed does it increase well, the rate of breastfeeding okay so i'm not sure about the countries but what i can tell you in research that has been done that um, being designated as a baby friendly hospital that the exclusive rates have increased that is mm -hmm. def a definite so you know just think about it if we now are baby friendly hospital first thing we're gonna do is when babies are born is is to make sure that you breastfeed your baby and formula will not be an option, which is sometimes people have the option. Some mothers come to the hospital and they already know that they're not going to breastfeed. And so they figure, okay, I'm, I'm not going to breastfeed. I'm going to give my child formula. So this is not acceptable. You want to ensure that we encourage the, babe, the mother to breastfeed the baby. Now, are there any other sort of benefits, not to the mother, but are there any benefits to, let's say, the staff or the medical industry as a result of this uh, initiative? 
Yes, there are, there are many benefits. I mean, if you think of us as a country, um, apart from the individual in terms of um, it, being, it being cheaper not to you know, buy formula, etc., but it's, it's, it's environmentally friendly as well. You're not having to, to um, you know, buy all those tins of milk and, and, and this thing. So it's, 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 there are lots of benefits to mother, baby, country, environment. It's a win-win for all. Okay, so. we're, we're approaching the end of the program. Is there anything else that you want to add before we go off air? Yeah, I'm really hoping that we would um, be successful in implementing this baby-friendly hospital. Um, as we know, it's going to be so beneficial to the babies, especially we know that babies who are not breastfed, they are at risk of death, at risk of malnutrition, and um, we would like to ensure that we that we are successful in implementing this. Okay. I want to thank you very much for coming on our program. You've been here before. You're mm. a frequent guest. Mm. And obviously, you're going to come back again. It's my pleasure. <laughs> quite possibly to talk about the in-depth, the benefits of breastfeeding. Yes. As well as a lot of other initiatives that the Ministry of Health has going on. Yes. So, thank you very much. And I hope to see you again very soon. Yes. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I want to thank the audience for staying tuned to this program. I hope you've learned a lot. Uh, please stay tuned to a lot of our programs on the National Television Network and follow the government of St. Lucia on our platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, as well as Twitter. So thank you very much again for watching. Please stay tuned to other programming. <laughs>